Hey, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer, and I am a psychologist in my day job. But I have this passion to equip people uh, so that you can be powerful in your life. And so I was just preparing for this video and it was coming to me how to convey this to you so that you can have a giant transformation in your life just by knowing this. So I was thinking uh, what was coming to me was three different ways that you can be powerful in your life. And the word power came to me because I was like, oh, how do I remember all those three ways? Because sometimes when I'm teaching, I go into my higher mind. And so um, my logical brain sort of gets set to the side and I have my doctorate and everything. So I have a lot of knowledge, but I want to uh, remember what I'm teaching you guys. And so on the way here, on my walk here, so that we can have the beach, I was given the word power because uh, I was thinking what's a mnemonic for the three things we're going to talk about. So these three things, if you, if you learn how to have discipline in these areas, and I know no one likes discipline at the time, but it will change your whole life. I know this will change your life because I feel the benefits of how it's changed my life and it's brought so much more beauty and peace, that peace that passes all understanding into my life. So these are principles and what they are. So if you think of the word power, it's, in, it's included in the word power, is when you let go of problems, because that's drama that we create, but I'll, I'll explain this. And um, there's O, uh, W is the, the second one is worries. When you let go of worrying, and then um, eliminate, the E is for eliminate rejection, all right? So it's, this is a lot, but your whole life can change. So watch this video over and over and over again. And I'd appreciate it if you share it with other people. You'll see at the end, it's your way to give back because I could be doing all sorts of other things, but I take the discipline to do this because I want to equip, I want to equip you. And I want to equip the world and that's your way to give back is to give this to other people but see if it's worth it at the end and then please do so I, I'd appreciate it a lot because I, I work hard to, to be present and be present in my life so that these these truths and ideas can come through me to you Someone come down this path I chose a path that's out of the way but it works all right so how to be powerful with letting go of problems all right. Know that I heard a mystic explaining it this way. That it's fun. It's fun. No, no, it's, it always happens for a reason. It's good. Way to climb up the hill. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Discipline. All right. Well, it's really steep, and she's old, older. You know. All right. So. We have, we have a present day personality. We have a personality. I heard a mystic say it this way. You come in here with your essence as a child and you develop this personality around it, like the yolk of an egg and the white. And in order for a chick to come out of the egg, it has to eat up the protein, the white around so that it can break through the egg and live as its real self. Like there's something alive that gets to live this chick instead of just an egg, right? It's just like that in you. You are a soul in a human body. And we develop this personality in order to get by in life. But if you wanna talk about the alchemy of spiritual change, I often say I'm here to help people navigate through their spiritual awakening and all of life is a spiritual awakening. So know that this is about having enlightenment, enlightenment. You, you're gonna lighten your life, the burdens of your life. And if you understand, if you understand this, that the, if you wanna call it, in the Old Testament, they would call it, in the Jewish writings, Shekinah, 
or the New Testament, the Holy Spirit, there were people anointed. And it's like, if we are made out of God, anyway, I won't, I won't go into a deep explanation of how these things can come to you. That's a totally different video. All right. But what I want to teach you is the power of letting go of problems. Once you start noticing, see the egotism, the mind loves to have problems. It loves to have things it can ruminate and solve. You know, it's like I used to do Sudoku or um, puzzles or, you know, it just wants something to keep itself occupied because then you don't have to keep thinking the thoughts that play over and over and plague you in your mind. You know, this is why people go to movies and they want entertainment and they go to, to things that make them high, you know? And there's nothing wrong. This is why I, I was had it in my mind to come here to go to the beach to bring this to us, you know, because you can let go of your problems and you just sit in quiet, right? Because you have this expansive nature behind you that reminds you to slow down. And so nature, nature will help to bring you back in alignment. A lot of the other things we go to, the um, addictions, I have a, a lyric in one of my songs that I wrote called, uh, you promised the world, it says, you, you promised the world and left me with nothing. Because all of our addictions temporarily ease your mind, you know, but they don't teach you how to have an easy mind. And so I always want to find the deepest and most sincere and realist, and realist, whatever, the most lasting real solutions. And so this is why this came to me is, the egotism loves to have problems. And so um, I heard Eckhart Tolle say, he's the guy that wrote The Power of Now, he said, life already has, it's, it's difficult enough without adding problems to it. Nothing has to be a problem. It's just a situation for you to deal with. It's come up, it's presented itself to you. You can begin to trust that, and that's hard, you know, when people have been traumatized in childhood, I understand. It's, it's easy to just go, oh, well, just trust in the universe, trust in divine love, trust in God, trust blah, blah, blah. Smile, Jesus loves you, you know? Or, um, you know, uh, whatever your religion, I welcome all religions. Because um, I always want everyone to feel loved on, my, on, on the videos that I put out and to know that you are welcome wherever you are. Um, and yet I'm still gonna teach from what I've learned and in, in the path that I have been led on myself. And so uh, I encourage you to have respect for that. That's just the path that I've been on. So I don't wanna leave any of the richness of that path out, you know, just because not everybody knows from that path. But I, I anyway, it's a universal. So in order, in order, going back to that, what the mystic said about the egg, in order for you to live from your soul, and to let that grow is you stop living in the personality self. You stay as an egg. Um, Jesus said it this way. He said, a seed must go into the ground and the, the husk goes off. The outer shell goes off so that it can grow into what it's meant to be. And so if, if it doesn't, a lot of people think that they are already that and they're living as if they are this tree when really they're walking around as an egg with like a Jesus fish on it or, you know, I was always like, just, just slapping a Jesus fish on your car doesn't make you um, one with the way of love that Christ was teaching. If you think of him teaching enlightenment, teaching peace, teaching how to love on a higher level, you know, you can't just call yourself a certain religion and that means you're walking in the way of that love. And so what I do is I teach how to walk in that way of love as best I can, you know, but, okay, so going back to the P in power is, if something comes up, like there was a problem with my car the other day, a problem, see? If my egotism keeps going, oh, this is a problem, and, and I have to, um, I have to make an issue out of it. I have to, um, I 
I have to add drama to that. You know, I have to tell everybody, oh, I have a problem. Look at me. See, we start getting our importance from the problems that we have. And, and we don't realize that, you know, we're trying to garner attention or affection or help. You know, we go back and we take ourselves into this childlike position. Here, let me look. This childlike position where you're helpless again when you have a problem. When you just say, this, this situation has arisen and I want to do my best to, uh, to address it, right? To address it with integrity, to address it with all the skills I know how, to get wise counsel from people that have already been through this experience before, to um, not be hooked in, you know, caught up in it, not be taken away by it not um, develop my identity from it. It's just when you start understanding you're going to have a more powerful life when you, when you stop and take deep breaths, move out of your primal brain. You see, our, our, when we th think something's a problem, we go back. Here's one up, one down. We go back into this childlike dependent position and we go into our primal fearful brain and we don't make the best decisions because we're, we're down in this helpless place. And so when you take deep breaths and you go, no, I can choose to be conscious and I don't have to make this a problem. It just is what it is. And how can I address this in the highest and most wise way possible, right? So I, I could go into this on my way here. I was like, wow, I could write, I, I might, I might just write a book about this. Um, Cause I've, I have three books published, but there's just so much I could say, so I'm gonna keep this. I plan on keeping it to about 21 minutes. Uh, it was gonna be seven minutes each. That's just what came to my mind. So let's go on to the W. So we're just touching on these. But if you watch this over and over again and you understand this, even the woman walking up the hill, you know, I, I just trust what comes in these videos. It's meant to show us it's possible. This is very steep, you know what I mean? It's like, it's possible to be disciplined. And when you do that, you add like strength into your life. You add um, this capacity in you to face to face things that that other people are too scared to face. It gives you courage. It gives you stamina. It gives you perseverance. It gives you insight into truths, into really being powerful in your life. It helps you calm yourself down so you can stay in your higher mind. So you get to be this tree that you're meant to be instead of a seed walking around, you know, putting sunglasses and cute clothes on a stupid seed. I'm not saying it's stupid. I'm saying stupid is taking away your own power and you're stooping to your lower nature, you know? And so anyway, W worries right our egotism loves to worry it just gives it something to do it loves to feel like look at all these things i have to worry about you know this is why i came here i was like what do we have to worry about uh look at what you have to do and and be first it's being doing having or be have to whatever but be in presence be in love be at ease pray forget we forget to pray to divine love to, to to god as you understand god is is the good shepherd i have a little i have a kid's picture right here of, of uh, christ as the shepherd but you know or if you know psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd the divine the i am the the yeah the i am that i am so notice all you have to do is notice oh i'm calling this a problem and that's getting it bigger oh i'm hooked into worrying about this and worrying is thinking about an unknown future it's in in, in the future if i imagine that a monster is going to come get me or my car is going to break down or something like this i'm worrying about something that's not is it's not happening right now it's it isn't and so how can I battle this unknown thing? I can't, I, there's no way for me to address it because what the divine gives you is it gives us this day our daily bread. It gives you enough to deal with what is right now. The super substantial is the daily bread. It's like the, the spiritual, spiritual food 
that I require right now to be loving to this person, to forgive, to love myself, to accept forgiveness, to accept grace, to accept the help that's going to come for this this experience, not a problem, this thing that's happening right now that's bringing up, this worry that I have, I, that my mind has, my mind has, you don't have it. Check yourself, check. In your essence self, in your deeper, you are a soul in a body. You know, someone called it a rental the other day. You're in a rental. You have been given this gift of this body to be living in, but you can connect to the divine. And so look, check and go, am I worried? Am I in lack? Am I, my real self, missing anything? Observe that. Because what happens is all of these eyes will come up and like, I have to worry about this. I have to do this. You get a sense, you get a high. It's a temporary high again. It's just like addictions from worrying because you feel like I'm important. I have all these things to worry about. And so um, it's like, what I help, I work with my clients. I work on what's the secondary gain. There's a secondary gain. Because you have a sense of importance. As strange as it is, and as much as it tortures us to worry, because we're not, Christ said, be anxious for nothing, for no thing, no thing. When you're connected onto this earth and onto your fleshly desires, you know, and what I want right now, then there's a lot of worry because you're not connected to the bigger picture, to something beyond that, to this peace that can come through you that passes all understanding. Your mind can't understand it because it thinks I have to get my finances in order. I have to get my job in order. I have to get my relationships in order. I have to get all these things that I'm worried about. Why not choose to stop making them a problem? I'm not saying put your head in the sand and be in denial. I'm saying stop adding the story of this is a problem and that worrying is going to accept it. Um, what does it say? Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and petition, present your request before divine love, before God. So by connecting again to this horizontal, and I've done these videos on, there's a cross on it, and it's like connecting to the, to the vertical and connecting to the horizontal, to other people, to yourself, right? So notice, just notice when you're choosing to worry, that's a choice, a conscious choice you can make and take a step back, take some deep breaths and go, I can make negative predictions about an unknown future or I can be present and stop giving my energy out there. And that energy gets pulled back into you so you can actually deal with the situation at hand that's presented itself to you. You know, like put your big girl pants on. I'm like, step into them, you know, I'm like that. Step into them and, and do your best and, and leave the rest behind, you know. And that's just uh, what was said on my yoga video. So I'm not saying that as advice. It's just, I like that saying. And as you keep learning to do your best, doing your best is actually refusing to let your energy go out here into this unknown future of worry. That's robbing you. And, and what they say about um, Satan or whatever, the evil forces come to steal, kill and destroy. And so I'm presenting this to you as, you know, as a person who in my day job is a psychologist, I'm not your psychologist. So if you need a psychologist, go get that. What I'm saying is as a psychological understanding and the science of this is understanding this is robbing you of your life to be caught up in problems and call everything a problem and add the drama of the story to that to have future projections about worrying that just takes us back to our primal brain when it was really frightening in childhood because we didn't feel like we had any power over that because we were children waiting for our parents, trying to please our parents, trying to solve things that way so that they could heal what that was, you know, and, and rectify, you know, um, um, clear up and make in alignment with, with love that situation so we're not in chaos. So this is why I'm saying I could write a whole book about this, but um, I'm gonna wrap up with the last one is um, eliminate E, rejection. The, the O was just, you know, um, problems. And don't you don't have to have problems or worry and eliminate rejection all right if we want to write that out a lot of us you know um, uh, and it's in our society we've been caught up in our egotism and we we define ourselves by our outer personality by what the world tells us and what our parents showed us and if we didn't feel a lot of presence 
presence heals so much of this in our childhood and love and affection and protection. You know, if we didn't experience that, then some part of us feels rejected and not loved and like we're not worth, but that's a lie. It's, it's like if someone ignored me my whole childhood and my parents locked me in a basement, you would know, you know that my worth has nothing to do with that. But what I experienced of my worth was that I wasn't worth loving and protecting and teaching how to live in this world and teaching how to experience love and all that stuff. So um, the last word, and I'm gonna wrap up in 30 seconds still, is rejection. And so when you let go of that, because that is another lie, and, and what we do is we go keep finding people to treat us that same way. And it's unconscious. We don't want that rejection, but we go to those people because that's what we're used to. And so I encourage you to be aware of how you're going to people that reject you and you don't have to. And when you stop doing it within yourself and stop believing the lie, it changes everything. I wish you so much love. Share.